my daddy was called to be a minister, to be a pastor. But daddy ran from the call of God upon his life. When you run from the call of God and you don't answer the call of God upon your life, you'll have nothing but heartache and havoc in your lives. But it won't just affect you. It's going to affect your whole family and your children. I, I believe that uh, if someone in a family doesn't answer that call, uh -huh. then that man is going to come on a child or someone else. I, we was uh, in, the, in the, the church, but I, I didn't see a lot of victory. You know, I didn't see a lot of overcoming uh, in the churches or in the body of Christ at that time as a young girl. I would hear people get up and testify, oh, I want y'all to pray for me. The devil's been after me all day long. And I heard a preacher one time that got up and said, I, I drive this old beat-up car, and God wants me to drive, up, drive this old beat-up car because it'll keep me humbled. And we had an old beat-up car. So, you know, as a young girl, I said, ooh, I don't think I want to serve this kind of God. I think that me being a woman, uh, that's as I got older and the Lord just be really just kept dealing with me. Uh, I married young, had two small children at a very young age. Uh, my husband was not saved. He was not raised in a full gospel church like I was. But God is so awesome, Tina. Because, you know, the gifts are the call of God without repentance. God doesn't withdraw that call upon our lives. But it's left up to us if we're going to answer that call. But he knows how to get your attention. And so I had started going to uh, a church, and it was not a full gospel, because I knew if I got in a full gospel church, you know, where the Spirit of God was moving, I was going to have to answer the call of God on my life. But I found a church that didn't believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, and it was comfortable for me. There was a man that came, we were living in Avondale subdivision, that came to the subdivision and was, cross, was passing out the cross and a switchblade by David Wilkerson. And right before that happened, this man that Leland was working with came to our house and witnessed to Leland but the Holy Spirit was dealing with me, and he grabbed my heart. And then I was also, right after that, the man was knocking on doors and gave us the book, Crossing the Switchblade, and I read it. And the Lord began to deal with me because I could remember the experiences I had him with him at the early age of nine years old and called to preach at 12. And this man that knew Leland invited us to a revival at their church. And we went. I went. And God gloriously touched me by his spirit, refilled me with the Holy Spirit. And there was about ten families from that church that came to the revival with me, got saved, filled with the Holy Spirit. A lot of these families to this day is serving the Lord and their children. Well, I guess for the first uh, three or four years after coming back to the Lord, being refilled with the Holy Spirit, we was having these prayer meetings and Bible studies, but mainly prayer two or three times a week. A lot of people, sometimes my house would just be wall to wall with people. And we would stay up half the night praying. And so, but then, I started feeling led to start teaching. So I would really get into the Word and start studying the Word, and I would start teaching. And then there would be those that was coming to the prayer meetings, and they said, well, come to our house, like on a Wednesday morning. At one time, I was teaching two Bible studies at the same time. And, of course, I was under a pastor. And so on a Wednesday morning, I would have a Bible study at 10 o'clock. 
and Reed would do this, and I would just teach the Word and then pray for people, and we'd go into prayer. And we would see people get saved and filled with the Spirit. But one thing I want to make clear is I would always tell them to get to a church. A lot of times I would invite them to the church I was attending. I realized that it was training me. It was all training. Uh, I had taken some courses through the Berean Bible uh, College, you know, at home courses. But I, get, I would have to say the greatest teacher of all has been the Holy Spirit, the precious, wonderful Holy Spirit. A few years later, the Lord began to deal with me to go into full-time ministry, and that was pastoring a church, you see. But for years before that happened, in the Assemblies of God, for about 10 years or so, I was licensed with them and traveled as an evangelist. And so that was tremendous uh, training because then I had to study. I had to study and ask the Holy Spirit, and the Lord would just give me the messages. I, I believe that the most important thing with me, I had such a hunger for God. And here it is, 40-something years later, been in ministry for over 40 years. I am more hungry for Him today than I was yesterday. That's the secret. Just running after Him. If you have been called, or anybody that's been called into the fivefold ministry to please answer the call of God.